Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today's video is going to be all about low tier gameplay, why there's not much of it featured on this channel, and why I don't even really enjoy playing low tier tanks all that much these days. Now, when I first started out in World of Tanks, and I had absolutely no clue about the game, and any of you new players out there who are starting to learn in 2021, I feel incredibly sorry for you. Because this game was hard enough to be able to first learn how to play 10 years ago, when pretty much everyone else had no idea what they were doing. Now, after 10 years, there are a lot of people who have been playing this game for far too long, a lot like myself, who, who at least have learned a couple of things about the game, and now they're going to use that against you. And it does feel as if the, the skill ceiling of the game has managed to get very high, at least with regards to the community, and you've got your work cut out to even be able to get a few shots in. Now, I've, I've talked about this every time I play the Panzer 3E, and there's a lot of those inside this game that we're playing. This, this round happened during one of my Tech Tree showcases, where I think I was featuring the Italian heavy tanks. And of course, to be able to get up towards the Italian heavy tanks, you have to make your way through the Tier 3 Italian M15-42. A very uncommon vehicle to see on the battlefield, but as we're going to see in the gameplay here, this vehicle is actually voracious. It's probably one of the better Tier 3 tanks in the game. So, as I was saying, with the Panzer 3E, probably a lot of them in the matchmaker because there was also a German tank that was top of the tree at the same time as the, the Italian heavies. Or actually, the Italian heavies have never been top of the tree, I don't think, yet. I was probably playing this because everyone voted for it and they wanted to see what the Italian heavies were all about, right? But the Panzer 3E, when I first played that vehicle, um, I was absolutely useless in the tank. We're talking about horrifically bad. And if you want to see just how bad I was, then I thoroughly recommend you go and check out one of my favorite videos on this channel, albeit that it's a few years old, called Everybody Starts as a Noob. And in that video, I show that in my first 50 games of World of Tanks, in that Tier 3 German light tank, I managed to average 50 damage per game, or, or even less, and I think I got a total of 5 kills in my first 50 games in that tank. Yeah, it's, it's pretty atrocious. These days, whenever I play like a low-tier tank, I'm usually getting about 5 kills a game in a vehicle like the Panzer 3E, the very powerful ones, because I now know all of the mechanics. I have all of the advantages that I never used to have. Back then, I used to have 50% crews. Back then, I couldn't buy gold rounds, because... Gold rounds were available only for gold. Now they're just available for such a large amount of credits that the only people who could afford to fire them would be people who have invested gold into the game as well to be able to get a premium account or some premium tanks. So back in the day, I was just absolutely horrific. And just the kind of disparity in the game now um, when you've got all of your advantages compared to when you, you don't have all of your advantages is pretty crazy. You know, when you've got binoculars to be able to see your opponents at decent distances. When, like me, you're using a premium consumable on this tank. It'll cost me 10,000 credits. I'll still be able to make or break even or even make a profit in this game while using it. But it just gives me that edge, that advantage, so that you can manage to get the DPM before your opponents. So that you can be more accurate than your opponents. So that you can see further than your opponents all of these advantages that we just I just couldn't have back in the day. And while there are definitely some cases of where oh that was very close by the way down to 24 hit points oh as we pick up our fifth kill of the game there are definitely some cases where i feel that the reason why i play better now is because i've learned mechanics in the game and hopefully i'll be able to also just aim a little bit better than i could back in the day talking about aiming a little bit better goodbye amx 38 turret a very unusual low tier amarak but there are undoubtedly some just key pay to win features that I can now afford myself as my account is developed. And so really for new players playing the game these days, it must be just this absolute horrible wall that I can imagine that you're banging your head against. You're playing against experienced players who have lots of advantages. You're playing without any of those advantages, or at least if you do have them, you probably don't have the skills to be able to make use of them. So playing World of Tanks just must be an absolute nightmare. And this is one of the reasons why I don't really play low tier games now. There's multiple reasons why I wouldn't. But one of the key reasons is, is just the pure challenge that I would be able to get. I don't really, I, I've, I've kind of done it all, you know? I've, I've managed to get, you know, your 12 kill games at low tier. I've had Kolobanov's medals across the board up to, up to tier 10. 
it, every time you kind of have to one up the excitement or you look for a challenge for an honorable kill or against an honorable team that you feel at least there's a level playing field now a lot of you might be thinking well maybe if you used a 50 percent crew or you didn't use a premium consumable or you didn't use binoculars on your tanks they're at low tier then maybe it would be like a fairer fight the problem with that, however, is that if you do that and you put yourself at a disadvantage, there will be other players who are professional SEAL clubbers who have played... Some of, some people have played 10,000 games in a single low-tier vehicle, who will have all the crew skills, who will have all the advantages, and will be merciless against you. And so I feel that... Because you can, you feel that you should kind of min-max the vehicles at low tier. Otherwise, why would you be playing and put yourself at a disadvantage? Whereas, you could just play high tier. And if you play high tier, then hopefully you're playing against experienced players. And it's kind of like a, a level playing field across the board. At least, that's that's the idea, right? Even at high tier, it doesn't feel like the, uh, the, the playing field is truly level, right? But when it comes down to it... You know, your skill and your knowledge in World Tanks will still outdo all of the crew skills, any kind of tank advantage that you have. But that's not to say that stuff like that doesn't help, right? So, another thing that I wanted to highlight in the video today is that I honestly think that people like me playing low tier uh, tanks must just tr truly be damaging for the game. How are these players meant to learn how to play the game when they play against somebody like me who's played 50,000 games of World of Tanks and has all of the advantages and knows all the maps like the back of their hand. I, 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 Wargaming recently in one of the patches at least suggested that they were going to try and match experienced players at low tiers up against other experienced players, right? Uh, that's definitely a very good idea. What would almost be better is if they continued to, should we say, remove some of the disparity for low tier players. Why do we even really need 50% crews at tier 2, 3, and 4? Uh, is, it a, is it a tier that Wargaming feel like they need to monetize? Their whole plan was to kind of get everybody to skip up to tier 5 to try and boost them up there as quickly as they can. Because I think Wargaming has just truly given up on low tier. And they feel like they want to invest the time into the, the tier 5 and above gameplay. Alright, so let's focus on the situation at hand now. And that is that we have an AMX-38 and a Panzer 2G to our right. Now that Panzer 2G managed to penetrate one out of about, uh, I'd say, goodness, what is it? About 13 shells that hit our tanks. They penned one out of 14 shells that were fired at us there. And it reduces our hit points from 24 down to uh, 13 with the 11 damage they dealt with that little pop, pop, pop gun on the Panzer 2G. Well, if it, if it wasn't close before, it's incredibly close now. We're up to nearly 3,000 damage in a tier 3 tank. We've picked up 9 kills, but there are still 3 tanks left on the enemy team that we're going to have to try and deal with. Now, it looks like two of them are in a platoon. The Panzer 3E and the AMX-38 are in a platoon. And we just spotted the Panzer 2G over towards the north of this map. My team is actually starting to really get behind us. Um, it's, it's really interesting when I play at low tier that there seems to be a lot of very vocal people who are questioning what the Panzer 3E is doing. I'm just praying that the little tier 3 German light tank on my team is going to advance from down here, up around, and then maybe is going to help me against the AMX-38. They're exploring different positions here, maybe trying to squeeze their way through that gap. I really don't recommend to do that. And luckily for me, the Panzer III rushes in. The AMX-38 doesn't seem to want to shoot him. He's still in interested in shooting me. But now, now that I've seen that they've turned their attention towards the Panzer III, I'm actually going to have to advance down here as we make our way through. And hopefully we're going to be able to get some shots on the AMX-38. Now, the AMX-38 doesn't seem to be too much of an idiot. They seem to want to... Oh, actually, maybe they're not. Maybe they are going to aim at the AMX-38 here. They shoot them. That allows me to put some pressure up. And luckily for me, even though they turned their gun towards us, the low-health tank, we were able to get our final shot into the AMX-38 and finish them off. And now the Panzer III is saying thank you to me a lot. So I'm, I'm, I wonder if this truly was somebody who was maybe watching the stream at the time. I thought that maybe they were going to troll me, but in the end, actually, they're kind of being quite useful in this game, which I'm quite happy about. And that's also another reason why I can't really play low tier anymore. Whenever I play low tier, there's so few people playing that everybody who's who's watching the stream signs up at the same time and ends up in my games. And yeah, it just turns into an absolute mess. This is actually one of the few games at low tier where I haven't been uh, pushed around 
uh, which was which was quite a nice surprise. And it's always quite refreshing when you see what you can actually achieve uh, when you're not getting pushed around all the time. And that is that we've got three times more kills than the rest of our team combined. So in this situation, I'm just praying that the Panzer 3E on my team will please, buddy, go and cap. Please cap. I say, the, I say it like three times. Capture the base. Can you cap, please? Please cap the base. Capture the base. So, yeah, if the Panzer 3E was to go into the cap right now, it would be absolutely good. But they seem to want to just come alongside me and just take some uh, screenshots or have some moments instead. Um, of course, not everybody speaks English. Maybe the Panzer 3E doesn't. Uh, but, you know, when somebody's pinging the map, I would at least hope that the player would uh, be able to make their way towards there. We've got four minutes left on this game. I've got enough time to just chill here. By sitting in this bush, I'll be able to spot anyone who makes their way across over this location. This is what's so powerful about this bush line here, is that you can actually spot anybody who makes their way up on, across that ridge. Of course, if you are, are using binoculars. And luckily, this tier three Italian vehicle has 320 meters base view range. So with binoculars, a half decent crew, and even a premium consumable, you can start to get up to a very decent spotting distance. It looks like about 440 meters for this tank. And that's one of my key recommendations if any of you out there don't feel as guilty as me at playing low tier, is to make sure you do set your vehicles up for long distance spotting. Binoculars is still, without a shadow of doubt, the most important module that you can use on any low tier tank. There will be some, should we say, close quarters combat vehicles that maybe would be better with a turbo, but still, for the most part, vision is key. If you can spot your opponents before they can see you, then you can just deal huge amounts of damage to them. And we saw that the battle of attrition, uh, we lose a lot of health by fighting in those kind of close quarters combat scenarios against the Panzer 3E earlier, but all of the damage that we dealt to the other Panzer 3Es, to the BT-7 artillery, to even to the little premium tanks on the enemy team, like the Panzer uh, S-35. Oh dear, that was rather unfortunate for them. By dealing that at long range, there's just absolutely no threat. And unfortunately for the Panzer 3E on the enemy team, looks like they might have got themselves a little bit stuck in this scenario. Oh yeah, that's a bit of an awkward one. But I'm not really going to complain <laughs> because I just managed to get shots right up into the engine deck in a bit of a bizarre situation. All right, so my Panzer 3E buddy seems to want to maybe just follow me around. Maybe they're just in awe at the fact that we've managed to pick up 11 kills in this game and the Panzer 3E thinks that, well, I just go up and kind of snuggle them. Now, I actually do something that, in retrospect, I'm kind of embarrassed about. I actually say, come and watch it. And I, I can't believe I shamelessly plugged my Twitch channel as if we didn't have several thousand people watching already and that I really needed those couple of people to actually come and see. But it was just more of a case that this game was hilarious and the fact that there were about two or three people or four people watching anyway, I thought they would come and have a good giggle. Um, they ask if I was pro and I say, no, I'm terrible. Or I didn't even put the apostrophe in. Ah, 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 ah. And, and really, that is why... I don't play World of Tanks at low tier anymore. Now look, I'm not judging anyone. I'm not saying that suddenly I'm going to sit here on my high horse and tell you all that you shouldn't play low tier World of Tanks. Look, if you enjoy low tier World of Tanks, don't let anybody stop you. If you love playing at a tier where you feel that things are more comfortable, where you feel that maybe the experience of the enemy team is not so high so that you can take advantage of that, that's absolutely fine to each their own. Um, for me, the challenge is not there, and so I feel that I, I only really want to play the high tiers of World of Tanks. And I would implore Wargaming to keep making steps to make low tier easier for new players to be able to cut their teeth in World of Tanks. Because if dedicated SEAL clubbers and players like myself actively play those low tier tanks against those little puppies, then how are they ever going to grow up to be able to fill the player base at the mid and the high tiers and hopefully become long-term World of Tanks players. So an absolute filthy result here, dealing damage to 13 out of 15 players on the enemy team. We get 3,200 damage more than the rest of my team combined. That gives us a high caliber medal and we get a top gun for the 11 kills that we secured. And because of the excellent penetration the M1542 has, we even make a decent profit, even considering resupplying consumables so ladies and gents that was it for today that is why that i don't play low tiers 
Unless, of course, you vote for me to play specific tanks in the tank polls. Really hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase. And considering that Wargaming has just changed their whole top of the tree system, and so there are going to be three tanks that are going to be top of the tree, I'm going to be featuring them for each of the next Sundays. So today it's going to be the WZ 111-5A, so we're going to find out all about the Chinese heavy tanks and if these are vehicles which are simply knockoffs of the Soviet tanks, whether they actually hold their own value in the game. So come along right now as I play from tier 1 up to tier 10, so I can give you a few tips and tricks if you choose to get the Chinese heavy tanks this month. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you, and as always, thank you so much for watching, you've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.